Hi there, my name is Stacey Mendelson, and I'm the survivor of a high conflict divorce. Today, I want to talk to you about making decisions. During separation and divorce, you really have to be a rock star, and you're going to have a lot of decisions that you face. It's really important for you to be able to make these decisions efficiently so that you save time, you save money, you save a lot of brain chatter. It will help you move forward towards the goal that you're hoping for. And lastly, the more decisions you make, the more confident you become at making decisions. A lot of my clients face a lot of overwhelm and confusion when it comes to making decisions during divorce. Who's the right lawyer? What should I do with the custody schedule? What are we going to do about finances? I like to call this decision drama. The first element of decision drama that I find my clients suffer is the idea of making a wrong decision. They're afraid to decide because they're afraid they might make a wrong decision. I'm here to tell you that perhaps there are no wrong decisions. And what is a wrong decision anyways? Does it depend on the outcome of the decision? That the outcome wasn't as you had hoped? I'd like to think that a wrong decision is merely your opinion of the decision, and that is completely optional. I would also like to encourage you to have your own back whenever you make a decision and to decide ahead of time that you're not going to beat yourself up regardless of the outcome of your decision. You know, the, sometimes these outcomes that are less favorable or not expected are really just a cobblestone in the pathway of your life. Another obstacle people face when it comes to making decisions is the concept that the decision they make might upset the others around them. Some people uh, may feel hurt or offended or disappointed by the decisions you make. Here's the thing. We can't control how other people feel. Even as people-pleasing as we may try to be, we really have no control of someone else's feelings. Their feelings are based upon their thoughts about our decision, and they get to choose those. So I suggest you make the decision that's best for you and best for your children. The last obstacle to, to decision making would be about time constraints. Once you've collected all the necessary data that one would need to make a decision, make it. Just make it, decide to love it, move forward and watch it unfold. So uh, a few thoughts, a few last thoughts. If you are in a situation where you have to decide between A and B, one of the questions you can ask yourself is, what would I decide if the outcome of A was fantastic and the outcome of B was going to be fantastic? Both have excellent outcomes. Which am I going to decide? Lastly, I'll share a few thoughts that I have about making decisions with you. Uh, some thoughts that my clients have decided to think on purpose and deliberately. One, I choose to not have any regrets. Two, there are no wrong decisions. And three, everything happens exactly as it should. Until next time, I hope to see you again. Bye-bye.